Hi y'all, this is Larry from Deep South Texas and I've had lots of requests for a planting guide for when I plant my plants in the garden. And uh, it's the beginning of a new garden year for me. So I've uh, taken the time to uh, type that all up and uh, we're gonna let you know when I start my plants, when I transplant my plants, or if I direct sow into the garden. So I've typed up a, uh, a list and uh, I'm going to try to include this list in the description so you can copy it and, uh, and print it. Um, I think that'll work for everybody. Let's get started. Well, a couple words before we get started. So this is a planting guide for Deep South Texas, which is uh, basically the Rio Grande Valley. Um, if you go much farther north in the United States, it, this guide might not do you any good at all. Uh, there are other parts of the world with a similar climate to ours that it might be useful, and I have a lot of uh, international viewers, so we'll, we're going to include this and hopefully it will be of use. Uh, a few words about my climate. It's um, very warm. We get uh, very few cold days during the year. Usually I can expect a frost one or two days out of the year and it's not a frost that goes into the ground. Um, it will kill, for instance, tomato plants, but uh, other types of vegetables seem to survive without too much trouble. It is very dry here, um, but it's also very humid. <laughs> Hard to believe. We live close, close to the Gulf of Mexico, so it's usually humid, but we don't get uh, regular rains. We do have tropical storms at times of the year, which dump a whole bunch of rain, you know, 10, 12, 15 inches at once but it doesn't really rain consist consistently here, so I actually have to water my garden most of the year. So if you have uh, similar circumstances, this will be a very useful video for you. If uh, you get long periods of cold weather, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, take a look anyway. Okay, now, now I think we're ready to get started. So here is the uh, planting guide I've sort of typed up here. We have uh, a key right here showing uh, if I start the plant inside or I direct sow it to the garden and uh, when to transplant it. So let's go to the first set of plants which are the brassicas, so cabbage, broccoli, and I've got Napa cabbage. The plan is to start these on October 1st. Now, it's after October 1st and I didn't get them started until the 4th, but uh, they're, it's, uh, they're pretty much all have germinated now. So only three or four left to germinate, looking good. Hopefully I'll plant these out into the garden in uh, the, at the end of October, you know, maybe the first week of November. So uh, on track for that. The next group of plants are the uh, onions and the leeks and uh, also throw in carrots here. These I direct seed in the garden. So the onions I'll take and plant uh, seed a raised bed fairly heavily, um, not really heavily, just looking to get a good uh, a good fill of the raised bed. And the leeks I will uh, plant very heavily in in a pot in a pot because I'll, I'll plan on transplanting them later. I also have transplant dates for the onions, so if my uh, if my onion seedlings don't come up 
really uh, evenly. I'll move them around uh, the first, first week of January. And leeks I will take out of the pot and plant them in a raised bed at that same time. Around here in uh, deep south Texas, Rio Grande Valley, we start seeing uh, onion plants show up at the big box stores, the garden centers, around uh, the 1st of January. And I'll probably purchase a couple bunches of those and uh, plant some additional onions if I need them or a different variety of onion. Again, carrots, I direct seed at that same time. They, uh, they, do, they do well for me. So I have a, a video on planting carrots. They need a little special attention um, as you plant them and germinate them. Um, you might want to check that out. Turnips, beets, Let's see, make sure this is in the, yeah. Turnips, beets, and greens. I direct seed those into the garden around the 1st of November. And uh, kind of out of order, sugar snap peas, I also direct seed around the uh, 15th of October. And these are uh, uh, climbers, so I have a, a trellis that I plant them next to. Potatoes, I plant seed potatoes ar around the uh, first week in January. Um, I would plant them earlier, but they typically don't show up in the, star in the, uh, in the stores until until uh, the 1st of January. I would plant them uh, the last week in December if I could get them. Tomatoes and peppers. I'm going to start those inside the, uh, on January 1st. And I hope to be able to transplant those to the garden in February. I'll plant uh, some on February 1st and some a little bit later as I can get a better, uh, better intelligence on what the weather is going to be if we're going to have any cold, any cold snaps. So take a chance and plant them as early as I can because uh, tomatoes can't take the intense heat that I get. So by the end of May, they're done. So I need to get them in the ground as quickly as I can to avoid the heat. I know many of you are trying to avoid the cold. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid the heat. So same for peppers. I'll plant some of them as early as I can. And then through, uh, throughout February, depending on what the uh, weather forecast looks like. I'll also sow... Uh, celery in no it's not so it i will uh, plant it inside under lights on january 1st and try to get that transplanted by march 1st uh, celery is is a real slow grower starting out so uh, we'll see how that goes cucumbers again i'll i'm going to start them uh, inside on about January 15th. These can be direct sown into the garden if you wait a little bit later. Uh, again, and, and uh, I try to transplant those February 28th. And squash, I will start them inside about February 15th and transplant uh, March 8th. Squash can also be directly seeded in, in the garden. Green beans, those get directly seeded into the garden. Um, shoot for February 28th. If the uh, weather forecast looks pretty good, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, again, these uh, green beans, they don't uh, perform real well in the heat. So the sooner I can get them planted out or planted, the better. And uh, 
It all depends on the weather. I replanted last year uh, because of the polar vortex that killed, off, killed them off, but uh, I didn't really get a very good yield on green beans last year. Sweet potatoes, sweet, sweet potatoes for slips. So around the 1st of March, I'll find a spot in the garden um, and I'll put, I'll put plant three or four whole sweet potatoes in the ground and then they will sprout and uh, grow shoots. And then on about April 15th, I'll remove those shoots and uh, plant the shoots in a raised bed to grow sweet potatoes. Sweet corn needs uh, warm ground to plant it in, and usually by uh, the middle of March, first week in March, the ground is warm enough here to plant sweet corn. Um, again, I think it's important to get this in, in the ground as, uh, as quickly as, as I can. It is uh, direct seeded in the garden, mainly because um, of insect damage. I think the longer I wait it, the more insect damage I get. So the earlier I get it in the ground, the better. Okra, direct seeded at the same time as the sweet corn around March 8th. Uh, this stuff, this stuff loves our, our weather. <laughs> it grows and grows and grows. It produces okra pods for a very long period of time. Um, more okra than I can eat. Watermelon and cantaloupe, I'll direct seed around uh, April 1st. They, they like it hot. They don't, they don't do much when it's cold. So I'll just plant a hill and put five or six seeds in each hill. And uh, they do well. Southern peas, which are black eyed peas or pink eyed purple hole peas. Uh, I plant them in a, in a, raised, in a raised bed around uh, around the 1st of May. Or actually, it's whenever I have a raised bed that's, that's available. So they, they can go May or June, it's fine. Again, I think earlier is better than later for insect damage reasons. Um, they, they, but they did well last year. The, the first year, which was the second year I planted them, the first year I planted them, I had, uh, I think I had uh, rats or squirrels eating all the beans out. But uh, this year I've got a cat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much of a, as much of a vermin problem as I've had in the past. Now, what you don't see on this list is garlic. I've tried growing garlic for, for five years and am never successful down here in the Deep South. So if you're living down here in the Rio Grande Valley and you're successful at growing garlic, please leave me a comment and tell me what type of garlic you're growing and when you're planting it and how you're doing it because I have had no luck. I'm going to try some elephant garlic this year um, and maybe that'll work but uh, I really would love to grow my own garlic and have just not been successful. So I hope this uh, planting guide helps out uh, those new gardeners down here in the Rio Grande Valley. It can be very challenging to grow down here in this heat. Now, if you're down here in Rio Grande Valley, deep south Texas, and you do things differently, please leave me a comment and tell me how, how you're doing it. And uh, again, if you grow garlic, tell me how, because I haven't. I haven't been successful growing that. Again, this, this list will be in the description. I hopefully, or my intention is you'll just be able to copy it and, uh, and print it or paste it into a document of your own. I, I hope it's helpful to you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it that thumbs up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.